Hi, Little Book Tube. I've had a rotten Tuesday, if I have to be honest about it. It's uh, It started off poorly. It's pitch black and pouring rain here in Boston. And it's also actually chilly, a little. And all those three things together just play bloody hob with my little basset hound's rheumatism. It's never good under any circumstances. And today she can get no comfort. And if she can get no comfort, I can get no comfort. And on top of that, my UPS driver this morning brought me only one package. One. And he also informed me that he's getting a new route, which means he's going to have a, he's going to be replaced next week. I'll probably get some all thumbs noob from the central office who won't understand my special needs. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I seem to be getting into squabbles and arguments with every person I meet, even if it's just a trivial thing. And none of my favorite editors were at the monitor's newsroom when I went there today. And and just all boiled down to uh, that, that moment you sometimes have where you just say, oh, forget all of this and just want to pack it in. And then I remembered what a very wise woman once said, that book halls are my jam. <laughs> and on top of that, I remember that BookTube always makes me happy. So instead of crawling into a corner and moping, I hauled out the camera <laughs> and turned it on. Uh, and my mail driver, the mail truck driver, Tom from Tipperary, he didn't let me down. He was there in his poncho with his pith helmet in the rain to deliver some packages. Not many, but they're bulky. <laughs> so I thought I'd do those, and maybe I'll do a tag as well, just to work myself out of this uh, this funk. Uh, so let's, let's do these. We'll start with this. This thing is heavy. It's a big, heavy package. And, you know, in terms of cheering oneself up, I can just take a moment to remember that most book lovers don't get big, heavy packages in the mail. This is just one. There's a whole pile of them here. That's cause to turn that frown upside down. <laughs> That's not a smile. It's an upside-down frown. Work on that, too. <laughs> Classic Simpsons book. <laughs> Let's see what this is. This is big. It's going to be an art book or a nature book of some kind. What have we here? Okay. I, I, I don't know what this is. This is a uh, Pierre Giles? Hoy? I don't know what this is. On the 40th anniversary of Pierre Comoy and Giles Blanchard's romantic union... This volume traces four decades of artistic collaboration between the photographer and the painter. Never heard of either one of them. <laughs> okay. I've never heard of either one of them. Have you? <laughs> if one of you out there watching has heard of these two and knows their work and really loves them, then this book is for you, not me. Uh, this comes out... I don't know why I'm checking. It comes out in December, but I don't know why I'm checking. I couldn't possibly... I'm okay with, with, you know, getting a new biography of uh, Harold Macmillan and needing to bone up on him because I've read all the previous Harold Macmillan biographies, but it's been a long time and I don't keep those things, you know, right in the front parlor of my mind. I'm okay with that. Absolutely. Especially if there is a checky poo involved. But an absolute cold open something that I have never heard of. I don't know anything about it at all. I am not in the least curious about uh, that. <laughs> it's probably not necessary for me to know when this comes out. I'm probably not going to do much with it. Uh, so let's move on. That's a weird opening. Let's move on to this. This is W.W. W. Norton, one of the greatest publishers still working in the English language. So this will almost certainly please. Uh, oh, and look at that. It's Norton Critical Editions. I mentioned these on this channel before. Uh, they're meant for schools, you get uh, an authoritative text of whatever book it is at the front of the book, and then in the back half you get, in the back half you get uh, supporting essays, and they are wonderful. They start out with historical background. So if you have, for instance, um, brr, 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 who would you, uh, if you have a, some sort of Greek tragedy in a new Norton critical edition of, let's say, Oedipus Rex, you would have the mythological background, as much as we might know of it, as the first essay in the back, and then you would have contemporary accounts. Does anyone in the ancient world mention the Oedipus Rex? And and then you would have 
you chronologically move forward. You get Addison and Steele, you get Alexander Pope, you get John Dryden, all on that, moving forward to the present day and modern bullcrap literary criticism. <laughs> and they're invaluable for students because they put the work in its big context. And you don't actually need a teacher to do that for you. You have a Norton Critical Edition. You have that book. You have it and the ripples that it has caused in the literary in the literary pond. Like, for instance, uh, I've got a shelf of them over there. Like, for instance, the Seamus Heaney Beowulf is a, Nor is a Norton Critical Edition. So you get that and everything else you would ever need. A 10-page primer on, on how to decipher Old English and a bunch of essays uh, from well-known names like C.S. Lewis and unknown names. And... It's wonderful. It's the whole world of the of the text in question. And we got to what, what I don't even I didn't even stop before I before I started lecture. I didn't even stop to see what they were. Oh, there's Shakespeare. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, which is one of my all time favorite Shakespeare plays. It's one of one of the three or four that I know by heart. Uh, and Othello. And if memory serves, that is a still from a recent Broadway production. Oh, what should it tell me here? Oh no, the National Theatre production from that, from 2013. That's Adrian Lester as a, as Othello. That is a heck of a cover. <laughs> uh, and this one's not bad either with the with the sticky hearts. Uh, but this is great, fantastic. Uh, remember, Norton Critical Editions in 2016 on this channel have sometimes disappointed me. I've I've gotten more than a couple that were. Uh, Norton Critical Editions of authors that I don't really care for, and more than a couple that were ugly. The, the, the physical design of the book was ugly. These two, that is not the case. <laughs> and they're Shakespeare. So. And, and Norton, the Norton people always include a uh, uh, wonderful note. <laughs> so, hope these will find a good home on your shelf. <laughs> they certainly will, but I'll also write about them. Uh, and then, excuse me, Lucy's being a little a little extra clingy and mopey because she's not feeling good, and there's nothing I can do about it. I heard the uh, standard medications would she's too sick, she's too old, she can't have them. So all I can do is comfort her and keep her really warm. That's that's what I'm doing. Uh, but it's still my heart goes out to her on days like this. I just have to. I'm sure that tomorrow the weather will be back to 70 and clear and dry. Uh, I actually heard a, a, a young woman on the weather doing the weather uh, last week, and she mentioned the possibility of a dip in temperature and rain, and then she actually said, but don't worry, it won't last long, and then we'll be back to normal. <laughs> Grandpa Simpson style, I yelled at the screen <laughs> and said, that's not normal. 70 and dry and clear in Boston in November is not normal. <laughs> I don't think she'd have heard me. <laughs> Old man yells at cloud. <laughs> this is going to be one Simpsons reference after another. <laughs> uh, so what is this? This is... This is... University of Nebraska Press. Wow. <laughs> okay all right excellent we are doing fine this is the paperback what a lovely paperback this is the history of the holocaust in romania uh from the university of nebraska press this is the paperback edition very nice very nice you know i don't think off the top of my head i don't think i read this when i originally got it why would that be did i send it to somebody Maybe somebody in Romania? I I don't know. But it doesn't matter. This is uh, this is not the kind of paperback that I complain about. This is not going to break apart at all. And uh, it's a fascinating subject. It's part of the, the, the whole story of the Holocaust that uh, is fascinating. Oh, fantastic. All right. And the packing list. <laughs> they sent me a pub sheet. But they also send me, some, some publishers send you a packing list. And I don't keep them, but I do glance at them because, you know, and again, we'll strike this note here. To, when you're having a down day, pay attention to the stuff that's good to get you through. Don't concentrate on stuff that's bad. And one of the things that's good is, i got to tell you, especially if, if you've never experienced it, I, I'm here to tell you. Getting a packing slip for a book you want that has the book, the ISBN, 
the quantity shipped and then in price zero <laughs> is very nice <laughs> that's a very nice feeling <laughs> probably the the uh, process of generating packing slips is just automated so that you know there's probably nothing anybody can do about it uh, I, I confess when I when I first got back into book reviewing 10 years ago uh, and started getting you know books on request in, in the mail again even there were one or two publicists out there especially at Random House who uh, who actually remembered me and and said my god this isn't the same Steve Johnny <laughs> uh, but I remember uh, when I first started getting books in the mail again when I first had that whole experience of getting galley copies in the mail again uh, it brought back memories but it also just briefly caused I remember one time 10 years ago I had a a little this little half awake daydream where I dreamt that that I opened a book like this I don't know what it was and I pulled out the packing slip and there was a price there there was a bill I was so horrified <laughs> fortunately that doesn't happen in the waking world <laughs> and then this thing I thought we'd end with a box uh, it's only four of them uh, this has been pretty good except for that French thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what to do with it. If one of you has ever heard of it, I'll, I'll, if I try to remember, I always try to remember to put the book information down below. And I'll, I'll try to remember that so that if any of you has had any experience with this thing, you can let me know. Uh, this is another big thing, it looks like. It's an art book. <laughs> uh, it comes out in a week from Yale University Press. It's called Beyond Caravaggio by Letizia Trevis. There we have the Judas Kiss. Uh, and what is it? Is it it's an exhibit of some kind? Oh yeah, it's an exhibit that's touring uh, London, Ireland, and Scotland. Uh, this is kind of odd. It's coming to America. Why am I getting it? Why is Yale doing it if it's not even coming to America? That's, that's odd. No, it's going to the National Gallery in London, the National Gallery of Ireland in Dublin, and the National Gallery in Edinburgh. It's not coming to America. All right, well, if I owned a Caravaggio, I wouldn't ship it across the ocean, so <laughs> I guess I can't complain. The Italian painter known as Caravaggio claims a place among the most revolutionary figures in the history of art. His intense naturalism, almost brutal realism, and dramatic use of light had a wide impact on European painters, including Orazio Argentileschi, Valentin de Boulogne, and Jurek de uh, von Honthorst. Each of Caravaggio's... Uh, why can't these people have Irish names? I ask you. Uh, each of your Caravaggio's followers absorbed something different from his work, propagating his stylistic legacy across Europe. <laughs> Sounds a little clinical. Sounds like I should look away while that's happening. <laughs> and this is uh, an extensively researched and heavily illustrated volume showing those influences. And those are always fun because you'll get the Caravaggio and then you'll get the lesser known painting. Uh, wonderful fantastic oh, an art exhibit that i will never see that's and this time not because i have sick dogs but because you know, who's going to go to london <laughs> uh, and why won't we go to london <laughs> my little wombats <laughs> you've heard steve's rant on the subject before but i want you to all to keep up to date on steve's rants i want them i want them at your fingertips <laughs> why won't we fly to london hmm? Because if you go to an airport in America to fly anywhere, you must surrender your civil rights. And you shouldn't do that. No destination is more important than your rights. And if you go to an airport in America, you have to take off your shoes in front of everyone. You have to drink water if you have water on your person in front of everyone. You have to go through a body scan. And sometimes uh, those results are visible from the line. And all of this is just accepted when all of it's illegal. You're, you're absolutely not allowed to conduct a search without reasonable cause and a warrant signed by a judge. But, <coughs> but Americans gave it up, and then they've yet to take it back. And what do you get if you give up all that and go through it? Have you seen an airplane lately? I've seen YouTube videos. They're unbelievable. It's like flying in your bathtub. <laughs> and you, you're treated like cattle at the other end as well. So, so you know, and, and it's not enough. Did you go to LaGuardia, you get to the end of the line, the, the uh, underpaid high school graduate who's been given power over your freedom tells you, take off your pants 
and you say no, that's not good enough. It's too late by then. If you say no, I won't do it, the flight's not worth it, I'm not going to humiliate myself for your pleasure, you can scan my, my luggage with an x-ray machine, but that's it, I'm not going to strip my clothes off for you, I'll leave and I'll just not take my flight. That's not enough. It's too late. By the time you say that, that guy, you know, with the unconvincing comb over and the anger issues, can arrest you for refusing a search. And he can uh, imprison you without any further legal justification whatsoever. And he, according to the Patriot Act, is not required to inform your lawyer or your loved ones. <laughs> so if you go to an airport, the trap is already sprung. Now, I know that I know that I'm ranting here as a pure rant, Grandpa Simpson rant because millions of people, thousands of people do it every day without any trouble at all. They, they say to them, they roll their eyes at each other. They laugh. They say, well, you know, it's the price of doing business. I, I took off my shoes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm going to Brussels. OK, fine. <laughs> Absolutely fine. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it, <laughs> even if I had healthy dogs or no dogs. And even if dogs are waiting for me in Ireland. Uh, Boy, that was like 15 minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> sure made me feel better. This whole thing has made me feel better. I just knew it would. Uh, uh, so I'm going to put these away. I've got this Yale thing. I've got this thing. Whatever this thing is. Uh, and then we've got new Norton Critical Editions of Shakespeare and the Holocaust in Romania. So on balance, uh, a very good haul. Uh, that cheered me up immensely. So thank you, BookTube. <laughs> I'll see you soon.